The following is an excerpt of a recent power-up webinar looking at how to color correct a scene using Final Cut Pro 10. In this excerpt, I show you how to use a shape mask to control how bright a part of the image is in a scene. So this requires a lot of different tools, and let me open them up so I can get started. We'll open up the effects window, type Shift Z to get the the sequence to fit inside the timeline window, open the inspector, and now we're ready to work. The very first thing I want to do is to do a color grade to called a shape mask, which allows you to mask off the brightness of this and mask off the brightness of that. So let's take a look at how this works. I'm going to select my clip. When I go to the correction, notice these two symbols here. This allows me to create a color mask, a mask by a specific color, or a mask for a specific shape. I'm going to click on the shape mask. This shape mask allows me to define a region, which is between a circle and a rectangle, that I want to affect. If I grab this white dot and drag it to the right, I've now created a rectangular mask. Okay, we're going to make it bigger, so it goes full frame, and make it narrower, and put it right about there. Then I'm going to grab this outer rectangle and drag it out so it's feathered. This is the part that's going to have the greatest amount of correction and it's going to slowly feather out to the edge of that rectangle. Because I've added this shape mask, I can now click the right pointing arrow to switch to the color board and a couple of new options exist down at the bottom. I can make a change that exists inside the mask or outside the mask. We're going to do both. Inside the mask, I want to make an exposure adjustment. Because this is a really bright highlight, I'll pull the white level down. Now I could pull the white level down so far that it goes to black, but we're not at night here. We just want to make it dimmer. So I'm going to pull it below the line, except how far below? Command 7, show our scope. I want to pull the white level down to about 75%. Close the scope. Okay, notice that the window is now dimmer. It's not gone, it's just not as in your face. And because it's feathered, we don't see a hard line between where we've changed one color to another. Now I want to make an adjustment outside the mask. To do that, now I want to pull my mid-tones up. And notice how as I do that, we make the girl brighter. Now, way too bright at this point. That looks really like she's badly lit and very artificial. But if I take it all the way out, see how we can make her almost disappear? I want to pull her up enough that she seems to be visible inside the frame. This is where she was. This is where she's going. And we've got a light which is sort of hitting her from the stairs. But now this thing is just a mess. So let's move forward. There we go. That's where the camera shot stops. We'll go back. And we'll click this plus key. This allows me to add another color correction. There's no limit to the number of color corrections we can add. But in this particular scene, I only need to add two. Another shape mask. Drag the white dot to make it a square. Drag it down. Change the size so it's a little bit bigger. Lots of feathering. Again, click the right pointing arrow. Go to the exposure. Pull the white levels down. And we'll just make that bookcase a little less in your face. I could make it black, but notice how it ruins everything. I just want to make it darker, like right around in there. And now when I play this scene, Because she's so much brighter, you could argue that I've got a shadow that I see as this thing plays through. And you'd be right, I may not want to pull that down. But because our actress is the brightest thing in the frame, because she's moving, because she's in the center, and because your eye sees things that are there, it doesn't see things that are not, your eye will go to the actress and not pay attention to the fact that there's a shadow hanging around here. In fact, I could make that a little bit easier by just changing the position of this a little bit. down so it's a little less obvious and now when we play it 
Okay, now we've got this shot done. Let's go to our next shot. Look at how dark she is. Look at how bright the window is. Look at how the white tissues stand out on the couch. Well, I don't want you to look at the white tissues. I don't want you to look at the window. I want you to see that they're there, but I want you to concentrate on her devastated expression. I could darken this stuff, but it's a whole lot easier to make her brighter. Same process. Select the clip. Go to color correction. We add a shape mask. Drag this around. And I just adjust the shape on her. So I'm not trying to do rotoscoping here. I'm not trying to be really, really fancy. I'm just trying to make it so we can make her brighter. The inner, this represents the area we're going to correct. This is a feather between the two circles, between fully corrected and no changes at all, so that I can smooth it out. Because she's dark, you don't want to increase the white level, because if we look at it on the scopes, our white levels are already pretty good. What I want to do is I want to adjust the midtones. Watch how the white levels don't materially change, and yet I've made her a whole lot easier to see. Look at that. In fact, way too easy. That looks like cheap, tacky color correction done here. I want to pull it back down again. I just want to brighten her up. Okay? Now, there's light streaming through this window. Your eye is going to totally believe that this part of the couch is brighter than that part of the couch because the window says so. This is where we started. Look at how in the mud she is. We'll just pull her up just a bit, and now we can see her. And as we play this clip back, of course your eye goes right to here. She's brighter. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at how to color correct a scene inside Final Cut Pro 10. If you need to stretch your training dollars, the subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. You get access to more than 500 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers both Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week, and for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.biz store and look for Webinar 101.